How many people here bought anything online today? How many people are currently working or studying online? How many of you rely on your cell phones daily? Now tell me, how would you feel when your phone runs out of battery without being able to recharge it immediately? Let me guess. It might feel as though a piece of you is missing and that you are disconnected from the world. You know, earlier this year, I flew back to Korea after spending a few weeks abroad, and I had to get quarantined for two weeks in my apartment. And given that I live alone, I had to rely on the internet for everything, for grocery shopping, work, entertainment, everything. And it was very convenient. But looking back and thinking about that moment, I seriously wonder how my life would have been during this quarantine without electricity. I also wonder how the whole world would do without electricity, especially in a time like this, where the majority of countries and people live in confinement. If you think about it, every day, we are surrounded by the most important innovation of all times. It is true that mankind lived for centuries without electricity before discovering it. But in what conditions? And even though we survived it back then, the chances for the human race thriving without energy are highly unlikely. Electricity boosted every industry that disrupted our way of living. Without it, there will be no technology, no internet, and no factories, just to name a few. Have you ever heard about South Korea's journey to success? I mean, a country that went from struggling with the most basic human needs back in the 60s after the war, with almost no clean water and food, crumbling infrastructures, poor education, and healthcare system, to becoming one of the most developed and industrialized nations today, even called world's most connected country. South Korea went from receiving international aid to now giving it. They became a technology powerhouse that is exporting various types of products and services to the whole world. Such an incredible leap was only made possible with a nationwide energy coverage. Access to energy played a great role in South Korea's journey to development. And while electricity is omnipresent in most societies today, the type of energy we are using is harming the environment. Fossil fuel power plants like coal and natural gas are generating a considerable amount of carbon emission and greenhouse gas to such an extent that the world leading nations are now adopting a new energy strategy, one that decreases fossil fuel power plants and gives room to more green energy. Today's global warming emergency is not a natural disaster. It is a human-made disaster. And the effects are so subtle and imperceptible that most people would not realize their lives are being disrupted until we reach the point of no return, meaning irreversible climate destabilization. It will be the greatest disruptor of normal life we have ever known, exceeding even our great world wars and pandemics. Then what are we waiting for, you may wonder? Why not immediately change all harming energy sources? You know, while developed countries have it in abundance, it is very important to mention that these nations rely on fossil fuel power plants to generate energy. And these power plants present a great resistance to renewable energy adoption. This resistance comes in the form of ongoing relationships, contracts, and agreements ranging from 20 years to 30 years or more. And once entered, these contracts and agreements are legally binding between governments and power plant operators becoming a great constraint to the acceleration of renewable energy. 
This resistance also hinders the growth of renewable energy companies in most countries. With only a small piece of the energy industry market share, these companies often end up conducting more research and development than actually building power plants. And while developed countries consume the most energy around the world, achieving the net zero carbon emission mark will take them a very long time. For illustration, it will take Austria all the way to 2040 to reach the net zero carbon emission mark, followed by Japan, Korea, Canada, the US, and other European countries in 2050. And then later on, by Brazil and China in 2060. So if, and only if, there was a place that didn't have resistance towards renewable energy implementation on a large scale, that place will be an Eldorado. Now let me tell you about a distant place, a place called Africa. The place I grew up in, where I studied, and sometimes with lamps and candlelights at night. A place where many students are forced to go to gas stations at night in order to study due to the lack of electricity. And while other students are told to listen to their classes on the radio station during this pandemic. A place where energy is so scarce and the demand is ever increasing that, reportedly, 590 million people didn't have electricity last year. And to a certain degree, a place where many encountered issues can be tied to the lack of electricity. But let me tell you this. Africa will have no resistance to renewable energy adoption. It is very simple. With the lack of energy, comes the lack of resistance. And in the grand scheme of things, the lack of energy could be the very opportunity needed to solve an even bigger and broader issue, global warming. Because, and as opposed to developed countries, Africa as a continent doesn't have a considerable amount of power, fossil fuel power plants to resist an immediate transition towards renewable energy the lack of electricity will prompt Africa to not only welcome renewable energy instead of resisting it, but offer an almost clean slate for its wide implementation. And as a matter of fact, Africa could become the first continent on the face of Earth to be exclusively powered by renewable energy, and by the same token, the first to ever reach the net carbon zero emission mark. Now imagine this, imagine lighting Africa with renewable energy sources alone and generating power on a whole continent with almost no carbon emission. This alone will balance the amount of pollution of the environment and gradually decrease global warming for the time being as other countries of the world catch up. Hence, Africa leading the way. And such an achievement will result in improved public health with a decrease of neurological damages and cancer, all linked to a certain degree to air and water pollution. It will also bring great economic benefits that can translate to stable and cheaper energy costs by creating more jobs and most importantly, contribute to a safer and viable planet for generations to come. The war should come as one if we want to win this battle. And if international cooperation is required for such a pilot project in Africa, it is very important to mention, though, that this is neither a call for charity nor some type of experiment on Africa. This is rather an opportunity for renewable energy players all around the world those that, despite their cutting-edge technologies and expertise, are feeling held back in their current markets and countries due to the resistance towards renewable energy to come implement, develop, 
and improve their solutions in Africa. And doing so, these companies could build their portfolios and get proven track records on the one hand, make profit, and contribute to the development of a whole continent while saving the world on the other hand. I have a vision where every African has access to clean energy. And to that vision I say, yes we can. Because more than just a minefield waiting to be exploited, or a great safari destination, Africa must be treated as a beacon of hope, a healing platform for the whole world. For the beginning of saving the world and our climate might just start from Africa. Thank you. <laughs>